What's up, comic comrades? Let's go on another adventure through the multiverse of madness. This time, to meet the Illuminati with Patrick Stewart and other familiar and not so familiar variants. You might have heard the term Illuminati before when folks talk about Marvel and wondered how it all relates to the comics publisher. Several secret groups in history have the name Illuminati, both real and fictional, but mostly fictional. The modern idea of the Illuminati refers to a clandestine society of very few members, all powerful individuals, who secretly control the world. In our real world, this idea is rubbish, but in Marvel's comic book universe, the Illuminati are the real deal. And now, the trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has teased us with an upcoming iteration of the team, an MCU Illuminati if you will. So, who are Marvel's Illuminati? Tony Stark formed the Illuminati when he realized how close the Earth came to annihilation. This, as we said, came in the aftermath of the alien Kree and Skrull Empire's conflict. Stark gathered together those he believed in as the leaders of the superpowered community. He chose Namor of Atlantis, Black Bolt of the Inhumans, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, Professor Charles Xavier of the X-Men, and Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme. They all met in Wakanda, home of the Black Panther. Tony hoped to get the world's most technologically advanced nation to listen to his proposal. He also wanted King T'Challa to join as a member of the Illuminati. You see, it was Iron Man's idea that the leaders of these disparate superpowered individuals form a sort of a mega group. He believed that together, the Illuminati, the Avengers, the X-Men, the Inhumans, and the Atlanteans could prevent almost any disaster. But unfortunately, no one bought into Stark's dream, at least initially. The rest of the group knew that too many differences would keep such an unwieldy group from functioning. However, these leaders agreed to meet in a secret think tank whenever a crisis arose. If nothing else, they could share information and help steer events. All but the Black Panther were part of this Illuminati, as Stark coined it. T'Challa saw the entire endeavor as 40 from the start. As the years rolled on, the group gathered in secret to influence events. But there always comes a breaking point. The Illuminati stayed intact until the group voted to exile the Hulk from the Earth to another planet, to prevent any more damage from him on this one. Namor, once the Hulk's defender's teammate, was revolted at such an action. He was the first to leave the group, and soon it dissolved. Nevertheless, Tony Stark called the group together again when he learned about the secret Skrull invasion of Earth. After the heroes of the Marvel Universe thwarted the Skrull incursion, the heroic community, including the recently returned from the dead Steve Rogers, discovered that Tony Stark and other heroes he considered friends had formed the Illuminati behind his back. Despite his initial anger, Rogers eventually joined a new version of the group, realizing it was for the greater good that they include him. Captain America would later come to regret this decision. Black Panther, who decreed the Illuminati were a bad idea way back in the beginning, formed the group this time around. He knew a multiversal war lurked on the horizon, and that a group of the Marvel Universe's most prominent figures would be the only way to stop it. Unfortunately, the only way to stop another Earth from crashing into theirs was by building an ultimate weapon. A weapon that would destroy the other Earth. When Cap learned of this doomsday device, he revolted against the group. But Doctor Strange cast a spell to remove all knowledge of the Illuminati from his mind. Ultimately, the Illuminati stopped the multiversal incursion. Then the Council grew to include other high-profile members from the Marvel Universe. Beast, Medusa, Hank Pym, and Captain Britain all joined the Illuminati at certain points. And now it's only a matter of time before Marvel's think tanks form once again to figure out a way to solve an unsolvable problem. Will the Illuminati appear in the Multiverse of Madness? From the little we know, the MCU Illuminati differ greatly from the comics. They seem to share one prominent member, Professor Xavier. While the comics version monitored and responded to big events of their own universe, it looks like this version of the Illuminati, which we meet in the trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, watches over the entire multiverse. And it is likely that their membership reflects many realities. In the comics, several Illuminati groups formed in different universes too. But as far as we know, not one superior Illuminati governs the whole multiverse. Rumors persist about the remaining members of the Illuminati joining the MCU's version of the team. It would be odd not to have a version of Reed Richards, Marvel's biggest brain in the group. But will it be Yuan Griffith, who played the character in the 2000s Fantastic Four movies? Or will it be the leading fan favorite for the role, John Krasinski? Namor is also rumored to appear in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, but would Marvel Studios want to introduce him first as a cameo in another film? Perhaps we will glimpse him as part of this Illuminati in the sequel to Doctor Strange. And then there's Black Bolt. The Inhumans TV series was one of Marvel's least loved productions. Would they want to reference it by casting Anson Mount as Black Bolt once more? I don't think so. I can imagine many better possibilities for newer members of the group. Perhaps the biggest question revolved around Patrick Stewart's Professor Xavier. You can definitely hear his voice in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness trailer. 
a few years back, Sir Patrick said that Kevin Feige asked him to return as Charles for an unknown project, and that he declined. Now, we know that project was Multiverse of Madness. He felt Logan was a good end to his character's 17-year journey. But if he's playing a variant from another universe, that's not undoing Xavier's death. There is much speculation from Marvel fans that the version of Xavier we meet in the upcoming film is actually the same one from X-Men, the animated series. This would explain why Marvel Studios has had an active hand in the X-Men 97 revival. For all we know, it's a prequel slash sequel to Multiverse of Madness. If the Marvel Studios multiverse expands to not only include pre-MCU Marvel films, like the Sony Spider-Man films, but also animation, it might be the coolest thing Kevin Feige has ever done. And Patrick Stewart's Xavier and his multiverse-controlling Illuminati in the Marvel Cinematic Universe might just be the way to pull it off. But the linchpin of the Illuminati's creation in the comics wasn't really Xavier. It was Tony Stark. And our Iron Man kinda died saving the universe in Avengers Endgame. This has led fans to speculate that we'll get a version of Iron Man from another universe as part of the Illuminati, and the appearance of the obedient Ultron drones indicates we might be in for an appearance by an infamous alternate version of Iron Man. A superior one, even. But it's highly unlikely that Robert Downey Jr. plays this version of Stark. And if you're wondering who the heck superior Iron Man even is, imagine a version of Tony Stark that is all ego and zero morality. That did happen to Tony in the Axis comic book series back in 2014, all thanks to a spell that removed his moral compass. In fact, he had his own comic series aptly titled The Superior Iron Man back in 2014-2015. He wore silver armor and used all of his intellect to take over the world. Eventually, of course, the real Tony would retake his personality. The look of the Ultron drones definitely matches the Superior Iron Man armor from the comics, and fans seem to believe that Tom Cruise, who famously nearly played Tony Stark in the 2000s, is portraying this version. Perhaps he's less evil and more a version of Tony whose every decision goes unchecked. If he saved the world from Thanos using Ultron, then that might earn him a spot on the council, hence the Ultron drones we see in the trailer. Although created only in 2005, relatively recent in Marvel Comics history, the Illuminati has become a major part of Marvel lore. Ultimately, it seems like the Illuminati are neither inherently good nor villainous, though in most cases their purpose is a heroic one. But one thing they are is powerful, and that, we know, can go either way. Will this team have a similar impact on the Marvel Cinematic Universe? It seems like their introduction is a portent of much bigger and more cosmic things in the future. The Illuminati will likely find their start in the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but we feel they may twist their shadowy fingers into many movies to come. So, do you believe the Illuminati are real, or is it one big conspiracy of madness? Is Tom Cruise actually in the movie? Is Patrick Stewart appearing as Xavier Supreme? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and click that notification bell. Peace out!